Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope we're all well and thank you very much for tuning in. This is the second video in our Aerosoft CRJ tutorial series following volume three of the documentation supplied with the add-on. In this video, we'll get acquainted with the EFB and set up our aircraft along with running our safety and originating checks. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Okay, so once you have spawned in for the first time, you want to hit ready to fly. We'll jump into the cockpit and you will see that the very first time you load in, the aircraft will have some power and it will start trying to power up the engines and, uh, and get things to life. So what we're going to do is initially we will jump down to the EFB here. First click on the screen to have it load up and you will initially see the checklists. So first of all, what we are going to do is we're just going to run through the options available here in the EFB. We'll then change the aircraft state and then we'll start from a completely cold and dark state. So the EFB is useful. It has these five different tabs. Obviously, you've got all your checklists here. You have a performance page, which is very important. You have the aircraft page where you can deal with all the external ground services and doors on the aircraft as well as setting the aircraft state. On the maintenance page you can do various maintenance related functions. These are essentially functions that would be completed by a maintenance crew on the ground and uh, some of these cannot be operated during the flight. Finally, we have the options menu, which is a very useful menu for many, many reasons. And you can set up the options for the CRJ to your taste, essentially. So I have left a lot of these default and this is what I want you to set up initially. So obviously you can set it to your preference when the tutorial is done. However, what I'd like you to do is set temperature to Celsius, weight to kilograms, set the barometer units to millibar or hectopascals, set the option here on the end to synchronized, turn the flight director to dual queue, Set the IRS align time to realistic. Flight number location to line selection key five right. The throttle detent hint. I have that on hide. However, you can have that on show if you want. It's entirely up to you. That will essentially show you what position your throttle is in on the PFD. And uh, this one again will probably be very personal to yourself and what controller you're using. Basically, it uh, will allow you to set a sensitivity as to how easily the autopilot will disconnect when you move your yoke or joystick. I have that on low because my joystick is pretty new and it's not loose at all, so low is fine for me. Going to the next page, again, these are uh, a lot of personal preference however I would like you to copy my page essentially as it is now for the tutorial uh, turn on flight deck noises as well and uh, the rest you can copy over these sound options are uh, self-explanatory really I won't need to go through those these options here are basically it's a sort of a mixture of convenience options and manufacturer airline options. So some of this stuff on here, for example, coupled VNAV, which is essentially like 
the traditional VNAV you may be used to. The CRJ700 most commonly has just advisory VNAV, where it will just advise you rather than actually controlling the aircraft itself. Uh, it will advise you on the vertical profile you need to take. And this is an option, so you can enable it if you wish, but for the tutorial, please leave that off. The MFD map options, again, if you want uh, to match everything to mine on the tutorial, set it to this, but it's, again, personal preference. You don't necessarily have to have it like that for the tutorial, but I would recommend it just to keep everything consistent. Once you've set that, click Save Options, and then we are going to go to the Performance page. Okay, so on the performance page, first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to set our passenger numbers to 62. So you can do that by pressing the arrows here. The small arrow will increase by one. The double arrow will increase by 10. So we'll increase that to 62. Then for the forward cargo, we are looking for 368 kilos. So another way you can do this is by clicking on the box, deleting the information and typing in the number you want. So in this case, 368. And then press enter. You may have just noticed that this green dot moved when I did that. So you can tell that the entry has gone in there. You can also tell by looking at the figures down below. These will change as you obviously change these figures. So in the aft cargo, 370 is actually the correct figure. So we'll leave that as it is. And for the fuel, what we're going to do for this one is something that's not actually included in the tutorial. Just something a bit fun that I wanted to show as part of these videos. And we're going to essentially just delete that, hit zero and enter. Now, we're not going to leave it at zero. Don't worry. Obviously, we do want to go flying today. So we are going to set that up in just a moment once we have reset the aircraft state and started our checklists. So then what I'd like you to do is just press set payload in simulator. You should hear some noises there. And we're going to leave it at that for now. Next page, we'll go to the aircraft menu here. And obviously the aircraft is powered on now. That's not what we want. We want a cold and dark aircraft. So we are going to hit cold and dark in the top right here. And that will shut everything down and leave the aircraft in a completely cold and dark state so that we can set it up from fresh. What you could also look at whilst you're here is the default state. So you might not necessarily want the aircraft always to spawn with the engines on and everything ready for taxi. So you can actually change it between any of these modes here as the default just by clicking on this box here. I'm going to put it to cold and dark because that's generally what I like. And once you've done that, we are then going to just set the final few options here and we can start running our safety check. So first of all, we want to make sure that the ground crew can load the cargo. So we'll open the forward cargo service door and the aft cargo door. We'll also open the passenger door and you'll notice this option then becomes available. We'll leave the guardrails up for now. And we'll turn the cabin lights to full as we're going to be flying in the daytime here. And then if you go outside, you'll see that the doors of the aircraft have now opened. I 
I'd advise you to have a bit of a play around with these options as the animations on these are very cool. If you set the drone camera to outside and then switch quickly between the two once, uh, once you set these options, you can uh, get to see the animation and it, it is very nice indeed. All right, so let's perform our first safety checks. So first of all, we want to just check the circuit breakers in the cockpit. These are located to the left and the right of the cockpit door. And in real life, you would just check if any of these have popped out or been pulled out by maintenance. They're not simulated in this aircraft, so we don't need to pay too much attention to that. We'll then jump on into the pilot seat or the captain seat. And the first hidden little trick I want to give you here is a couple of click spots. So these aren't mentioned that I could see in the manuals, but there is a click spot here to lower the yoke so we can have better access to all the instruments here. There's a couple more click spots here, but I will introduce those as we go along in the tutorial. We'll first, or second rather, we'll want to come down to this panel and make sure the nose wheel steering switch is to off, which it is. We'll then want to jump over to the overhead panel and make sure all the hydraulic switches are also set to off. We'll also want to make sure the landing gear lever is down. The flight spoiler lever is retracted. The flaps and slats lever is set to the current position of the flaps on the aircraft. In this case, it is zero. We'll also want to make sure that the radar is set to off. Now, this is not yet simulated in this aircraft, but it's good practice to make sure this is turned off in any aircraft you use so you don't fry the ground services when you turn it on. We'll next make sure the ADG manual release is stowed. The emergency flap switch is set to normal. And then we can go back up to the overhead and turn the battery master switch to on. Next, you would normally start the APU. However, we are going to leave that till later on for this tutorial. Jump back down to the lower center pedestal here and turn the IRS knobs to nav. We would then in real life want to check our emergency equipment, also the gear and safety pins, as well as the airplane documents. However, these are obviously not simulated in this aircraft. If you're flying on VATSIM, maybe you'll want to just check that you've got all the right charts. And for anyone interested, there are a few emergency equipment models in here behind the captain's seat and you can see those just by going down here. Okay, next of all on the safety checklist you will notice the hydraulic 3A pump is listed. Normally you would turn that on and off now or as required. However, we're not going to touch that at the moment. And also the next step would be to initialize the FMS. However, we are going to leave that for now. Next, we'll do a quick cabin inspection and test. So first we'll jump over to the overhead panel. We shall turn the emergency light switch on and the passenger lights or the passenger signs switches to auto. 
Jumping back down to the ICAS, we want to check on the right hand side. We're seeing the emergency light on indication here. And then we jump back up and just turn them off again. You'll hear a little bing and checking here that the message has disappeared. Okay, so remember how I said we were going to do something fun with the fuel? We're going to do that now before we go any further. So we shall actually twist ourselves back towards the circuit breaker panel. And we're going to take a look at this fuel loading panel here. And we can use this to actually fuel the aircraft. We could tell the ground crew how much fuel we want and we can set it going. So we're going to power this panel up with this switch right here. You can actually test the panel, make sure that all the lights work. You can also run the built-in test equipment. However, this doesn't actually appear to be simulated. Not an issue. So we're going to input the total fuel required. So we're going to use the increase knob here or the increase switch. And we're looking for 2,770 kilos. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to get it perfect. So I'm just going to go for the nearest value here of 2,820. That is fine. Make sure this knob here is set to auto, which it is, and we shall select on. You'll see here that the fuel starts building up here in the left, sorry, the right and the left tanks, and the valves are saying operational. You can also jump down to the ICAST display and you can see the fuel building up in the fuel tanks just here. Okay, so we are ready now to go ahead and start our originating checks. These are listed on the very first page of the EFB if you want them as a reference. Also, they are in the manual. You can have a look at volume four, the normal ops checklist. That includes all of these checklists in a PDF format.